In this video, I'm going to discuss how Postrans can import expense claim items into Sage 200. I know I like to keep these videos br brisk, so if you want to pause, just press spacebar and arrow left recap a few seconds, uh, kind of rewinds for a few seconds so you can recap on anything. So here we are on our expenses template, and let's just show you how we got to there. We just press the help button here and type expenses in, and you can see they're all listed there. These are the templates booking to projects, so we would click on one of those. Now, what have we got here? The template structure is we have a header section at the top, and on row 28 we have a whole series of tags. Now these tags denote and tell Postrans what to find in each of the columns below. Now these can be added, some of them are optional, we can access them by pressing the tags button on our toolbar and you can see there they're all listed, I could just double click and add them to the spreadsheet, there's a nice description of them in that window. Also when it adds them you can see there there's a comment which lists um, information about each individual cell. Anything beginning with PEH can actually be put in the header section of the template. So this template here basically lists everything in the lines. Now if I go to expense entry, this is probably more how a user would want to enter it. It depends whether you're importing from a file from an external system uh, and so on. So here we've got the works order expressed in the header and the reference expressed in the header, followed by the project items and the description, the date and the cost costs listed below. But let's go back to the other example. As I just said, the project, uh, sorry, the works order and the project reference, uh, sorry, the claim reference are actually in the lines. That's the employee under works order in column B and followed by the reference, followed by the project code and then the project item. Uh, then we have a description of the um, claim, the kind of cost. So maybe we'd have a um, lunch with Eric. Yeah, and the date, obviously. Now we have the expense claim code, followed by the quantity and the cost. Now the quantity would be for things like business miles. So in Sage 200, we can set up, let's just go to that window. So here we are in the Sage 200 maintain expense claim items. And if we move down to, I think it's mileage here, you can see here we've got unit base ticked. So that's now going to instruct, um, let's have a look, it's, it's the business code here. So that's going to book that in at 15p a mile. So no matter what cost I put here, it'll be overridden by this value here. And the VAT will be worked out accordingly. Now you can see also we've got um, car as an option here. Let's just, that's under travel. So travel, so under travel we've got car. So now we've got the rate of 60 pounds, so that's unit base. So I haven't put a quantity in there, but post trans will accept that that is a single item. So again, it will override whatever cost was in the spreadsheet um, and this being 60 pound. Now entertaining, if we go to um, meals entertaining, you see they're not unit based. So now it's going to rely on whatever cost I put here. So that's £100 inclusive of VAT. Now I can specify um, the different currencies also, but it will default to whatever's your base currency. And obviously if it's US dollars, then it won't apply VAT to the import. So let's press uh, import is post trans will scan down the spreadsheet until it finds an empty description so that would be the end of the import so what do we got here we've got the first line there it's employee 0001 job 22 book to CAD for that date entertaining cost of a hundred pound and it's inclusive of VAT so it's 17 pound 50 old VAT rates in the demonstration company obviously so I can just post that and now we move on to the next line. Okay, well, the next line is not very exciting. Also, it's worth noting, it's actually posting back here to this column the total cost that you've actually imported it to Sage 200, just for confirmation purposes. 
Now, we've now got to the third line down, which is 75 miles at 15 PMR. So you can see that it's worked out that cost. And the car, I believe, was, let's get rid of this window. It's just popped in, but 60 pounds. So yeah, it's obeyed all the rules. And if I didn't want to see the confirmation box here, I can just click don't ask again and then post and it will process the whole spreadsheet down unless it hits any errors and then it will stop and then you'll have a chance to correct them and that is again one of the advantages of post trans that you can correct errors very very easily indeed you can also add a formula to manipulate the data before you bring it in so let's just press post transaction so there oh, it's appeared on a different screen but there it's telling us that it's read four lines and um They've been processed. So there we've got the total cost that was booked into um, Sage 200. So if authorization is on now, these all these claims will go through the authorization process. Indeed, you can tell it, you can add the status to the whole transaction before you import it to set the status of each line. Now, again, you may have watched the video on um, X. Uh, timesheets uh, because we had a customer who wanted to uh, well they, they have duplicate project items in different phases so they actually wanted us to have a special feature here that enabled them to actually list the phase because oh hello we're not typing there so if I put four slash phase one there then this expense would be booked to that individual uh, project item under that phase of the project. Indeed, you can see a whole series of codes here. If you were importing this from CSV file, you would only need the first portion. Post-trans ignores everything after the comma. It just adds comma to enable you to understand what you've selected. So, for instance, we have in-cell searching. So any um, of these tags that actually has a little arrow up in enables um, in cell searching so if I press space and I tab away uh, you can see there all my live projects and of course if I typed in here 23 then it will fill that in as 23 space away I can see then all the cost codes all the sorry all the project items etc so I can turn this on and off the important thing is you don't need the description after if you're intending to import this as a text file from an external system and how easy it is to import from a text file very easy really like I say you would just supply the codes but say you create a, a CSV file that contains just this information here that block of information you just go up to column B go to post trans setup file import and say okay column B you could type column B in there this but this just brings a column in you can apply f um, filtering to the particular type of file you're going to bring in but anyway let's press OK and you can see there that's enabled an extra button and if I press that button I can then select the CSV file according to the filter I would have set on that previous tab so that brings that in and pastes it into this portion and brings down any um, formulas that may be listed on the right. Now there's a training video on our website under uh, the Sage 200 menu online training that goes through all of this in detail. And just another point I possibly missed here, you see here we've listed the expense items. We haven't actually ex listed the expense groups. You can actually list the expense groups, but if you miss it out and they're, they're all, if they're all unique, then it will just pick them up. Um, from the list because they're all unique. There's no point in specifying the actual expense group.